Hello everyone and welcome to Shard TCG. My name is James and today we'll be looking at how to draw an Inkscape. Now before I even begin to draw an Inkscape, I like to make sure I have the selection of layers ready. Template, because if you know the channel, you know I like to make cards, so I've got a card template so I know I can fit the creature in the right space. So for a lot of people, you're not going to need that. After that, we have lines for obviously line work. A sketch for any circles or anything beforehand so because you know if you know me you know I like my circles I like to draw with circles let's bring it down center it there you can also control shift a to align correctly so that is right in the middle there then we can get rid of that we'll close the template up again and we'll look at what else I need. I like to have highlights and shade that are put on after color and then a background just to finish off with. So the first thing I do is the sketch. I gotta say, so we've got this circle here and today we're going to be making an order element golem. So actually what I'm gonna do is actually elongate that one. We're gonna go for a, a simpler design today as well, just to, so we can show mirroring. And then we'll, what we'll do is we'll copy, Control C, Control V. Duplicate was just Control D. That'll copy it exactly at the point it was at. That'll be the golem's arm. So that's probably a better fit. So if I just copy and paste that over, we can start to see the golem shape coming together quite quickly. We're going to need some more of these, these circles, because we're going to want some legs. Golem's going to need some legs. Just let me work with this. So I just duplicated there, Control D, and now I'm moving that straight over by holding down Control and moving it along. It keeps it perfectly in that line. Just getting the basic shape. Once you've got the sketch, I'll show you the next stage of how I like to draw and by the end of this video we're going to have a lovely drawn hopefully. Half circle, okay. And we just grab that like that. Give it a little flip. Actually a quick way to flip it would just be clicking that button there. Did you catch that? That one there? So we've got to flip vertically and horizontally there. There, we've got the basic shape. So let's move on to the next part where I would like to move to lines. Now what's good about the sketch layer being separate is we can lower that right down if we want to. So now that we're doing lines, I'm going to start drawing the golem now that I have all the proportions and I'll catch up with you as soon as his design's finished. And now we duplicate that, give it a flip, slide it over. It's a little bit of a cheat, but you know, it saves us the time. I don't normally do perfectly mirrored creatures, but you also get away with it with golems, with artificial creatures and things, they can be perfectly mirrored. With more natural creatures, you can't really get away with it. So there we have our golem design now. He's mostly based on circles there. I'm actually, what's bothering me is just needs a little, needs a little curve on those shoes. There we go. So now it's not perfectly mirrored because those two lines aren't the same. So our heavy armor golem is looking quite good. Now we're going to move on to add color. That's the next thing I like to do. So we click on the color. We click on the Bezier tool. Now I have been using the Bezier tool with the ellipse to get the drawing. And so now I'm gonna change that from ellipse to non. So now you get this. And what we can do with this is if we control shift F, we have the fill and stroke. 
So we take away the stroke and we add a fill and this is how I add color which is a bit of a complicated way. There is a way to like paint bucket it, but it never seems to work right for me. Cause if I, if I do that, I don't, I don't get, there we go. I managed to fill that. So that means I've completely sealed all the edges, but you get these slight imperfections like this as well. And we can adjust some of the uh, settings, but I always think spend a bit more time on it and do it right. Follow this along here, like so. And I'll go right, I want that just there. Because sometimes I don't want my lines to join up either. I like my lines to stay apart. It gives it that uh, rough sketch style that I like. So, I mean, you can always use the bucket as an alternative, but this is how I like to do it. Maybe it's the hard way, but it's my way. Okay. And then we just follow that. And it's also good practice, really gets you used to how much and how little to adjust these these handles to get some weird shapes. And then we connect them up. We add a flat color, take away the stroke. And for this guy, I think we're gonna go with a saturated yellow. Now, actually, what else I would like to do is just add a little bit more detail to the golem before we add all this color. So I'll be back in just a minute and we're back. And you can see that I've just added these little bits of trim here, 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 and we can make that gold and nice and it'll really pop, right? So now we go back from ellipse to non and we add a little bit of trim. Now, what I've realized I've done, which is a really good lesson to teach people, is make sure that you're on the correct layer when you start drawing lines again. So if I do that, you can see those lines still exist. So that's my mistake. I'm going to do a quick fix now. What we've got to do is select the line, like so, and move to lines, and it's fixed. Right, so I'm just going to do that with everything now, just to fix it. Okay guys, I'm just going to add all the color to the rest of this and then I'm going to come back for the next step, which is shading. Okay, so now that we have the color added to the golem, we can start to see the light towards the end of the tunnel. We're almost done. We just need to add some shading. But before I go on to the shading process, I just want to show how I do the blurred eyes. It's a relatively basic thing, but not everybody knows these little tricks. So I'm just going to show it just in case. Right, so as you can see, I've added one eye here. Simple shape. So what we want to do with this is just give it a blur. The option's already there. You've got different blend options, but we just need the normal blur today. So it's up to you how much you want to blur. About that much will do. 26.7, so about 25%. Then we want to control D to duplicate it and change it to white and just shrink that down a little bit now if you control and shift while moving then everything stays the same or oh, it's just shift actually i think oh no no because if you do that oh start do some funky stuff okay so control and shift control keeps the same size and shift keeps the same position so that is that. Add a little bit more blur, just so it blends in a bit easier. And then hold down shift and just get both of them there. That stops you moving any of the other colors because if you click there, it's gonna pull everything aside. You wanna duplicate that. You wanna give it a flip. You wanna move it over to the other side. Yeah, so that's just a quick step on how to blur. Very basic, but some people might not know. Right, so now onto the shading process. I have done a whole video on shading. I'll, I'll put that in one of the link cards in the top right corner now. Feel free to check that out. But I'm just going to briefly go over it in this video. So shading is relatively the same as coloring. We want the Bezier tool again. This is our favorite friend. Want to go to shading. You want to make sure the shading layer is above the color layer. And then you just want to add a bit of shadow. So if I do this to here, like so, I like I tend to like my shading source to come from 
this direction. That's that's normally how I do my light source. So which means everything on this side tends to be shadow. So with this, that would mean that, let's see, we curve that into there. Uh, there'll be, I imagine there'll be a slight ridge there, like so. So we'll bring that up to there. Now this might have a little lip. So the shadow would follow into that, like that. We'll go around that because we don't want to shade in the eyes. And okay, and then we take that and then we follow this line up. The light's going to start hitting the, the top of this head. So actually, we're going to go up and then we're going to loop it back. Get it right. And I like to do a little, I like it to come back and join like that. So you can see the, the light radius would hit this spot here. So now we go and join this up with the beginning. Like that. We add the shadow. So we want that not completely black, about a five. And then we want it to be like a nice, not not a deep blue just a saturated blue we want to be able to tell it's got some blue in it though so that that looks good just a, a subtle blue so now when it comes to the layer once we've finished everything here we would lower the opacity to what we would like which means any little intricate details that we've added will still show up once we lower the opacity like so. So there's the head. I'm going to do the rest and we'll see the final result. Okay, so now that we've finished the shading, you can see at the moment that the shadow and the light really contrasts each other. So what we're going to do is, like I said before, is just lower the opacity. Now, it depends on the picture for how low you want it. You can have it like very, very faint. You can have it very, very deep. It seems very menacing. Normally go for somewhere between 50% to about 90, depending on how edgy you want to be. So let's let's settle on a, a nice 80. Should we say an 80? 80 looks good. Right, so I'm just going to briefly go over why I added shadow to certain areas, just to explain it a bit better for people who are new to shading. Because as I mentioned before, we have our light source coming from this direction. So as you can see the lights bouncing off here, it's casting a shadow where the arm is starting to curve, which means underneath we're going to have some dramatic shadow and then we're going to have this light being revealed. So the question is, why wouldn't I just go all shadow this side, all light that side and I'd be done, wouldn't I? Well, it would look flat. It's not a flat picture. You have to picture where the 3D is coming from. So this leg is sticking out slightly. So as the shadow, uh, so as the light is shining through, we can see a little bit of the light just sticking out from this armor. So we can see that. We can see a bit of light shining off the hands. We can see the light just casting itself on there, just casting itself on there. You can see that this hand, because this arm is over here, it is mostly engulfed in shadow, but the thumb is just sticking out so we can just catch some light coming right in the center of the thumb, or so it looks. I was wanting to make the ghoul parts look like they're protruding, so we have a little bit of light shining on the gold. We also have the gold casting some shadow here and there. The light just catching the gold there as the arm is curving. So even though it's in the shade, this gold is sticking up just enough so we can see just the shimmer of light. So now it's just a case of adding highlights. So how do we add highlights? Well, it's the same as shading, really. We're going to click the highlight layer, which is on 100% opacity right now. We're clicking the Bezier tool and we have nothing selected in the Bezier tool up there. And all we're gonna do is just do a nice shiny light that goes right across there. The more you practice with light, the more you see the kind of shapes that come out from it. It's like something like that tends to work. Now, obviously, instead of something dark, 
we'll, we'll just go pure white and see how that looks. We're going to do this bit over here. Now with this one, I'm just going to add that little bit of extra flare there just for fun. Over here, we want a more subtle light because it is further away from the light source. We can still do it nicely like so. And maybe a little bit on there. And I'm not sure if there's much more I can show you with lights, so I'll reveal this once it's finished. Okay, so now that we've got all the highlights added, all we need to do is just lower the opacity. Normally I don't do too much. I could leave it on max even, but I do like to bring it down a bit, normally about 90%. And I might end up going over this a little bit more and just making little adjustments. I mean, so let me know if you've enjoyed this video. I wanna know when I'm doing things right. I wanna know when I'm doing things wrong. If I've done anything that you thought could have been better, let me know, that's how I improve. And please like and subscribe and I hope to see you next time. Thanks guys. Bye.